On your journey through life, you are the hero. There are times, however, when it is beneficial to have an advisor to guide you along your path. Welcome to the Smart Money Simplified Podcast with Brent Mikosh, Certified Financial Planner, Certified Investment Management Analyst, and Co-Founder of MP Advisors, LLC. In this podcast, Brent discusses some of the most important and interesting topics of the day as they relate to finance, the economy, and beyond. Now, on to the show. Hello, and welcome to Smart Money Simplified with Brent Mikosh. Brent, how are you? As always, Eric, I am doing fantastic. How are you doing out there in Nebraska? It is springtime, and I, I love it. You know, just, uh, I don't know, it, it's, maybe it's just because I'm old. <laughs> Wintertime <laughs> is like, oh, would you just get over this already? And uh, so now the we've got new flowers coming out of the ground. My wife does a great job of planting things that I don't know how she does it. You, you just plant them in the ground, and then the next spring they come back again. So whatever those are called. But they're all over the place. So it's beautiful. It, it's getting there. And uh, I, I know that I think all of us are looking forward to that. Uh, what I'm also looking forward to is the conversation you're going to have today. You've got a guest in studio again. Who did you bring in? I brought in Robin Hahn. And we're going to talk about, arguably, one of the most exciting topics that we could cover <laughs> on a podcast. And it's property and casualty insurance. And I'm actually serious about this. This is, this is a great topic. And I think it's really, really important. So Robin Hahn is a personal risk manager at Robertson Ryan and Associates. And she can dig in a little bit more in terms of what that is. But what I really love about her, she's really passionate about this business. Full disclosure, she does all my personal stuff. And so I can, I can tell you firsthand that she does an amazing job. And I'm reading her bio here on LinkedIn. She says she's a self -procra self-proclaimed insurance nerd that digs helping people. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely attest to the fact that both of those things are true. So Robin, let's, what have you been up to, first of all? First, I will say that I am 100% an insurance nerd. And anybody that knows me would agree with that statement. So. What, what does it take to become an insurance nerd? How does that passion, happen? Passion. Passion. And knowing that you can help people and knowing that what you can offer to somebody can change their life. It's particularly in the property casualty space, because we, in my business, we don't sell it. We spend a lot of time looking at it mm -hmm. because you know, in my business, think people think about what are the things that can hurt them. And in many cases, they're watching television at night and they see the Dow Jones is down 500 points. It's up 400 points. What they don't really realize is that it's usually some kind of a, of a per personal professional liability that can take them out financially. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why we really want to take a close look uh, at, at what their property and casualty insurance looks like. And I'll, I'll start this with a personal story, then I'm, I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, so I had a client about 10 years or so ago. We looked at their property and casualty insurance. No umbrella. We suggested they call their, their agent and, and add that on, tack that on. We can talk a little bit more about what all that is and what some of these coverages are. But uh, after they did that, probably five or six months after they did that, the client literally had just gotten over a bad case of the flu. This is pre-COVID, so back when the flu was, <laughs> when the flu existed and you still left the house if you were sick, but was driving to church, rear-ended the car ahead of them. Everyone walked away from the accident. Okay, cars were not totaled. People got shaken up a little bit, but everyone walked away. About four months later, the person that he had hit had a stroke, and they took him, uh, his wife took him to the hospital. And the hospital would not administer, I guess, some kind of an anti-clotting agent. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know the medical details. But the stroke, it ended up being a pretty, he, he didn't pass away, but it, was, it ended up being more of a medical event than you would have expected. That person then came back and sued my client. And it paid into, their umbrella, into his umbrella policy. Had that umbrella policy not been in place, his insurance company probably would have said, hey, you know, your basic coverage is three or 500000 whatever the liability limit was, you're going to be on the hook for the rest. Mm -hmm. And that was a case that... You can, in theory, you can see what insurance can do in terms of protecting someone's financially. But when you see it actually happen live and in person to someone that you care about, mm -hmm. you realize how important it is. So it's something we always took we always took very seriously before. Now we take it really seriously. Mm -hmm. And we, we've got clients in 26 states, as I know you do. You yes. operate around the country. Yes. And uh, whether it's wildfires up in the Sierra Nevada or it's flooding in, in different parts of the country, these this is a really, really important topic. It is. And... I Thank goodness your client did purchase that personal umbrella. And what the umbrella is, is additional liability over an auto policy, over a homeowner policy. So your standard auto policies may be, as you mentioned, three hundred or five hundred thousand dollars. But in your situation where your clients, you know, the person they hit had some severe medical issues after the accident, I hear that more often than not, where two, three, four months down the road after a car accident happens and now, you know, somebody's being served, they're being brought into a lawsuit and they're just hoping that they have the right insurance in place. 
what I like to do is have those conversations ahead of time so that you know you have the right insurance in place. And you know what you said to the point that people are staying up at night, they're watching TV, they're wondering what the market's doing, how their portfolio is doing. Similar it, with insurance, I like to have conversations with my clients to make sure that they can sleep at night. They are not up wondering, do I have the right insurance in place? What is an umbrella? Gosh, I wonder if I added my wife's ring to the insurance policy. Exactly. Yeah. And I also have clients in 26 states. I have licensing in 26 states. So what's going on with the wildfires, not only in California, but Arizona is starting to be scrutinized as well. And some of the insurance carriers that I represent do have uh, specialty coverages where they can do a wildfire assessment. Not all insurance companies are doing that. So homes up in Payson, up in Flagstaff, in northern Arizona, that's a really important aspect of insurance because some people have had their homes 10, 15, 30 years in northern Arizona. Some people are buying them just now for a second home. Um, wouldn't you like to know that you have an insurance company that's going to come do an assessment and possibly show up? These insurance companies, these high net worth insurance companies have fire trucks that can be deployed if necessary to help mitigate fire like losses, maybe not complete losses, but they can definitely help to mitigate, you know, the potential of a total loss. So that, that's, that's an interesting point. I, I hadn't even considered wildfires, but we have clients. Um, we have clients that have mountain properties up in California and mm -hmm. Sierra. Uh, we have clients with mountain properties in Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, in Colorado, mm -hmm. and the West is dry. <laughs> it has been climate for, change is a it, real thing. You know, it's it's very dry, and we, and and uh, and I know that uh, you know for the fires, it seems like anyway uh, that they're that they're getting more severe. But more more importantly, probably people built in the way of these fires. Mm -hmm. So what? You know, my mom's got a place outside of Flag, and to mm -hmm. be honest with you, I have no idea what her fire coverage is. Mm -hmm. and you need to do her stuff too. Yeah. You know, Robin, you bring up an interesting point because you know we've got clients that have mountain properties in Arizona and Colorado, up in, in the Sierra and California, and the West is really dry right now. Uh, you know, heck, heck, my mom's got her place up in Flagstaff. I don't know what the wildfire coverage is. Is that something that that and you don't do her insurance? Maybe you should. Is that something that your basic policy on a mountain hop on a mountain property, mountain home, mm -hmm. would it cover that? So there are only specific insurance carriers that are offering the wildfire protection. Uh, some of the standard markets, um, the State Farms, the Allstate, the American Family, they do not offer that wildfire protection. Uh, will they insure your house in a wildfire they, zone? They will insure your home. However, if you worked hard to choose your home, you're paying to have this specific beautiful property in the mountains, you want it to not burn. So yes, you have insurance if it does, but let's go a little step further and say, let's try and stop it from burning to the ground. So that's the wildfire protection unit. The carriers that I represent, Chubb, AIG, Cincinnati, these insurance companies do offer the wildfire protection unit. And what'll happen is the insurance carrier will go out and do an assessment of the property. And in addition to uh, working to you know mitigate the risk, meaning that tree's right up against your house and it's going to burn the house down if embers start to float your direction. They'll make those assessments, but they'll also they can be deployed. They have fire trucks. They can put um, fire retardant, spray the fire retardant on your home, around your home. Work to try to prevent the house from burning to the ground. So in a, in an active wildfire. Correct. In an active yes yes, and they'll also go through a wildfire um, at, evacuation plan with you too. So you know we're in Arizona. These are not things you know. Maybe if you you moved from another part of the country, you could be familiar with tornado warnings and hurricanes, and so you know that you should you know have your passport and batteries and all of these things in a certain part of your home. Arizona, we haven't been trained to be prepared for wildfires necessarily. So the insurance company representative that comes out, the wildfire protection unit, they can come out and they can also tell you what to anticipate if you're being told to evacuate. And, you know, some people have homes in northern Arizona. That is not their principal residence. So they need to talk people through, well, what if the wildfire is, is bearing down on you and you're in Scottsdale? Right. You know, what are you going to do? So it's, it's a lot to think about. Um, and these are things that we never, you know, it wasn't as big of a concern even five years ago. Is, is it because you're, you're seeing, you know, bigger fires or is it because people are, are 
building in the way of these fires. It's There's both. a combination of both. It's both. And, and it's, I, I mean, we have fires burning right now. Yeah. There's one up in Prescott and one uh, um, over by Flagstaff. Hmm. So are, have you dealt with a number of claims with people that have had that have lost their homes? So the big fires um, that were in Napa, I think it was four years ago, right. I want to say. I think it was I 2018 because I think okay. it ruined the wine. Oh, yes. It smoked out the wine. Okay, so yeah. I was working at an agency and one of my colleagues uh, was working remote in Arizona. She was from San Francisco and she did have a lot of clients in that area have total losses. Hmm. And total losses, it burns to the ground. There is nothing left. And the insurance that we her and I were selling at the time were those high net worth insurance carriers. And in addition to obviously wanting to rebuild your winery, your home, an important aspect, aspect that people did not think of is the loss of use. And what the loss of use is on a homeowner's insurance policy is if you cannot stay in your insured property for because it's been burned to the ground or you had a water damage claim, your insurance policy will pay to cover the cost of substitute housing. Most standard insurance policies, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna pick on State Farm, Allstate, and American Family again, they usually do maybe 24 months of loss of use coverage, two years. Sometimes two years is enough insurance. For those fires in Napa, two years was not enough insurance, not enough time. So, and then you think, okay, typically if you are displaced from your home due to a covered loss, your loss of use is going to put you in a, you know, substitute housing. Maybe it's a hotel. Maybe you need to rent another house in the same neighborhood that you live in. Well, with those Napa fires, there's nothing to rent. There is nothing around. You, right. you know, you're going 30, 40, 50 miles away to try and find substitute housing. Oh, and guess what? There's a mad rush because everybody Everyone else's house burned to the ground. Yeah. So uh, the reason I hammer down on this is because the insurance that I sell has unlimited loss of use. So it would be real easy for the insurance company to cut a check for your $10 million for your home that burnt down, but then you still have loss of use cost. Sometimes that loss of use was exceeding the cost of writing the insurance policy, the, sure. the, the dwelling coverage. Sure, sure. Now, what about for people that, some people, particularly now, they've got second homes. Mm -hmm. They're airbnb them, mm. or them, they're, or they're using these second homes that maybe they're not even staying there, they're doing it as a business. Mm -hmm. Is, does that demand different coverage? 100%. And I'm so glad you went there because so many people, I think more people are learning, but a lot of people haven't learned yet that you absolutely have to buy the right insurance because if you're still, again, I'm picking on State Farm here, if you're still using your regular State Farm homeowner's insurance policy for your Airbnb investment property and there's a claim, State Farm's going to say, sorry, Charlie, no insurance. 100% exclusion seriously 100 percent. Would, would would they know because uh, one of the things be, before i met you uh and and i think every biz every industry has this there's there's yeah you know, there might be 10 15 percent of people that know what they're talking about i think obviously i think property and casualty insurance is really important what has always struck me and in the past i've done business with a couple different companies no one's asking questions mm -hmm. no one's okay you got this house here's the address here's the insurance you need period and there's mm -hmm. there's no what's in the house do you have any you know jewelry items mm -hmm. yet like all these mm -hmm. other what are you using it for mm -hmm. no one no one else that i've come across asked that question it, it would for people that that might have state farm and they have been airbnb being it mm -hmm. is state farm have any issue any liability on their part because they didn't ask that question i would probably say yes because so let's use this scenario so john smith buys a, an investment property to do the airbnb with and he gets his state farm insurance does the agent the state farm agent ask him maybe maybe not or maybe he buys this house and he is living in it and then he buys something else and he's like i'm just going to airbnb my first house people do it all the time that happens all the time so is your state farm agent asking you on an annual basis hey i see that you bought this house you have this house now what's going on with the first house Hmm. So annual reviews are super important. Is there a cutoff here in terms of your personal use where it is, even if you're Airbnb, at, say Airbnb yeah, for two, three months a year? Yes, there's a little bit of a gray area. So what usually pops up sometimes, and I've come across this question, is like when the Super Bowl comes into town. Hey, I might Airbnb my house. I can make, you know, $3,000 in a week. Right. 
that the insurance companies are probably going to be okay with. I would always run it by my underwriter. So there's no questions that if that's when your house burns down because your Airbnb guests, you know, leave something burning, there's insurance. So yes, there's accommodations. But if the full intention of the purchase of a property is to do an investment property, Airbnb, then you 100% need to get the different type of insurance for that. Okay. Now, if it's a long-term tenant, that's okay. The insurance companies, that again, that's a different type of insurance, and you can do uh, tenant-occupied homeowners insurance, but the Airbnb is definitely a different type of insurance. But I guess a key takeaway is, for anybody that might be listening to this, if you have a property that could be viewed even remotely mm-hmm. as income earning a business property, um, you need, really need to talk to your, to your agent. Yes, absolutely. You know, because what you don't want to have happen is you're doing this, it's an investment, there's value in it, and then something happens. Either a liability claim happens or there's some kind of fire or water damage or, you know, somebody crashes a car into the house because they don't know how to park in your garage and then you don't have insurance for it. Hmm. Then you've just paid premium for something that's not even gonna help you. Right. Pay the premium for the right product. Got it. Now, what are some of the things that people should be thinking about with their, with their primary house, where they live every single day? Are, are, there, are there issues that you find usually have fallen through the cracks that, that people the haven't one, considered? Something that I find so simple is that a lot of people miss a lot of agents, um, you know, and I'll, I'll you know, rag on us too, because we're not perfect. And sometimes we do miss things. But something I always dial in on when I'm working with a new client is how is your property titled? Okay, talk a little bit more about that. So if it's in a trust or an LLC, make sure that that trust or LLC is listed on your policy properly. Okay. So if there is some kind of lawsuit, you know, somebody trips and falls, or, you know, God forbid, somebody drowns in the pool or gets injured in a pool, and they're bringing a suit against you, the homeowner, make sure your trust is listed properly. Make sure the LLC is listed properly because you don't wanna go into court and then everybody's fighting over, is there insurance, is there not insurance? And there's no additional cost to list your trust or LLC. It's just the importance of doing it right. Sure, and, and a question I've always had too is where does the homeowner's liability end and where would maybe a guest liability begin? Like let's say we're coming into barbecue season here in Arizona, it's okay. beautiful outside. Mm-hmm. A bunch of people at your house, mm-hmm. maybe you're serving some adult beverages, mm-hmm. someone leaves mm-hmm. and gets in an accident. Mm-hmm. How, what liability do you have as a homeowner? That's your liability, your homeowner's liability. Yeah. So yeah. that's, so that's basically, so basically what you're doing is, is you're not only talking about the liability of things that happen at your house, mm-hmm. but in the case, particularly if you're entertaining, you're also right. dealing with the liability of, of, yeah, your liability follows you not only at your residence, your home, your four walls and a roof, but it follows you all over. So Here's the scenario I used to use. If you're going to the grocery store and you bump a little old lady and she falls down and breaks her hip. Right. Liability. That's going to protect you. That is your homeowner's liability. Okay. Also, your verbal word, your liable slander, that is liability. You know, watch what you do. Don't put those rude comments on the Angie's list and Yelp and rag on somebody if they didn't do their services, even if it's legitimate, because we've seen it in the news. Sure. People will bring lawsuit against you. You've tarnished my image. I'm losing money. It's all your fault, even if the vendor didn't follow through with their word. And what you said is correct. And so would that be a case? Again, you put, put the nasty review on Angie's list. Mm-hmm. They come after you for libel, slander, I guess, whatever. What's the exact term? Um, libel is your, I think that's the verbal one. Okay. Yeah. And slander is if you say something, whatever. But, uh, so if they come after you, is that your homeowner, your homeowner's policy is what's paying? Your liability on your homeowner's. Mm -hmm. Liability on your homeowner's. Okay. Yeah. So, so many people don't realize, you know, um, especially say first time home buyers, they buy a home, they're super excited. And then they say, oh, we need to buy homeowner's insurance. And then they might go through a title company, a realtor, what have you, their lender, and they buy a homeowner's policy. They have no idea what all of it means. So what I like to do is, and I kind of have a passion for the first time home buyers. They're usually a little bit younger. This is all new. They're working so hard to do everything right. So they really appreciate me taking time to go through all of the coverages line by line and what that means. And you know, there's what the limitations are to your point. There's limitations on jewelry. There's uh, limitations on fine arts. Maybe there's collectible sports memorabilia. Comic books are hot right now. 
they are just skyrocketing in value. So maybe you need to buy a little extra insurance on those. And you bring up another good point here. So when you've got, you got your homeowner's policy and then you've got your articles and items and things mm, that you're mm-hmm, insuring mm-hmm. Uh, and pick whatever the, whatever the limit is. But there are a number of items that are excluded or they're capped. So, Correct. So let's talk about the beautiful engagement ring that you got your that you got your spouse. Mm-hmm. What's covered? Standard homeowner's policy might be twenty five hundred. Maybe you could put a little fluff and bump it up to five thousand. I would not say more than five thousand on a standard homeowner's insurance policy. So anything higher value than five thousand dollars, you need to buy the rider for the okay. for the jewelry. How about for artwork? So artwork's kind of tricky in the sense that that is considered a content item, personal property. So the way I describe it to clients is you buy your homeowner insurance, you see the dwelling, you see the other structures, you see the personal property, liability, you see all of these things on your declarations page. These are all numbers. So a dollar amount will be shown for your personal property. I'm just gonna use whole numbers, 100,000 for personal property. So your artwork is personal property. Say you have two fantastic pieces that are 50,000 each. So you have insurance, but now you do not have any insurance for your couch, for your desk, for your television, for your toiletries, your clothing. So that's how I describe okay. the fine arts. So there's not like a cap like there tends to be for jewelry. No, it's a gray area. And the importance is to have a conversation with your agent. Yeah. Do I have enough insurance for these pieces of art? And do I have enough insurance for all of my personal belongings under my personal property that's listed on my deck page, my declarations page. Another question for you in, in, in terms of content. So, um, you know, we don't sell precious metals. Uh, we don't we don't deal with that here. But I know that I've got clients that are interested in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say that you've you're storing precious metals in your home, mm-hmm. and uh, you get robbed, mm-hmm. or you know, if the house burns to the ground, theoretically, you know, precious metals are still going right, to be there right, somewhere right, in the rubble. Right. But what happens then? What happens in a robbery? So precious metals are not insurable. Okay. Coins, you can do coins, Okay. but bullion, no. Okay, so like the numismatic, the art coins, essentially, the, the, the collectible coins, that's insurable, bullion is not. Correct. Interesting, so if you're, if you're robbed, game over. Go put that in a safe deposit box. Okay. Uh, loose stones are not an insurable either. Interesting, okay. Yeah. What it, it's, which also can be pretty high dollar. Any other big high dollar items that that people should be thinking about wine okay there is a huge surge in wine and bourbons okay so i did have a client in mississippi and he had a huge bourbon collection pride and joy of his mantle in his home and yes we could sell insurance for those bourbons the biggest risk to the wine and the bourbons and what we've seen losses is Say, for instance, there's water damage. Maybe there's a fire and they come and put the fire out. And those uh, bottles have water damage and the labels slip off. Okay. There's insurance for that if you have it scheduled. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because flooding is something that I, I know you, d- you deal in the southeast a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. A big deal there, not as big of a deal in Arizona. And I might be totally wrong with this, but you flood, you flood, you need specific flood insurance. You, you, so, yeah. So unless a pipe breaks, but in terms of an act of God coming in of a, a, you know, a hurricane right. or. Right. The way I tell my clients is because people say is flood covered. And mm-hmm. what I like to do is break it down even further and say broken pipe in your home and you have water damage and it floods. I'm doing air quotes here, floods your kitchen and you have damage to your cabinets and flooring. That is covered under the homeowners. Flood by definition in my world, the insurance industry is like heavy rains or backed up um, gutters, rising water coming up and into your home. Okay, Quite, something a little closer to home here, say in Arcadia area mm-hmm. of, of, of in our backyard, mm-hmm. you've got the um, Arizona Canal runs mm-hmm. through there. I don't know if that thing is ever flooded or not. I mean, I know there's excess spillways and everything, but mm-hmm. I'm noticing in that area when you drive through now that new construction they're tending to raise those houses a little bit Mm -hmm. is is that is that in floodplain or even some of the some of the washes coming off camelback again also in our backyard and i'm talking fema flood here not the broken pipe thing is there are different flood zones they're assigned an alpha character b c and x that's bob charlie x-ray b c and x are lower risk of flood so the canal over here i believe is the next zone okay so low risk of flood. That being said, some lenders, some mortgage companies are requiring you to carry flood insurance. 
So they're just sketched out about the canal. Okay. Higher risk flood zones are your V as in Victor, VE, we call it very expensive. So your Florida, the Gulf, you know, certain parts of Louisiana, Texas, those are VE zones. How about um, some of these washes off Camelback? Because, you know, we get good rain here. You see it, 44th Street's a prime example. So the washes and mud flow yeah. is, a, is a tricky gray area. I always err on the side of caution, just sell them the homeowners and sell them the flood. Okay. And then we're going to fight to try and find you insurance somewhere because sometimes it falls in a what's called a difference in conditions, DIC, and that mud flow sometimes isn't picked up either place. Okay. Let's talk about another one that I don't know that this would be covered in, in your world or not, identity theft, personal Ident data theft. Yes. So that is super duper important insurance right now, and it's a very hot topic because it's happening all the time. The high net worth insurance companies, the Chubb, the AIG, the Cincinnati, Berkeley One, they do offer the identity theft coverage. They do offer, hold on for a second, I'm drawing a blank, pause it. What is it? Uh, personal cyber, sorry. Okay. Personal cyber insurance, and it does cover the social engineering. So uh, sometimes, you know, we'll use you for an ex example. Um, you give a direction to one of your staff, um, and maybe you are purchasing a second home at this time, and you say, hey, wire this money over to the title company. Well, somebody's monitoring your emails, and they take that information and they flip, you know, maybe one letter in an email, and now it looks legitimate, but actually it's your staff wires money, but then it goes to the criminal. Yeah, well, that's that's one thing that actually we are, and we're going to pull that out. We'll, we'll take that piece out because we, um, if we're wiring money out, just, uh, you know, FYI, if I don't have the actual personal conversation to verify that information, I'm not covered as a business. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's say somebody wanted you know, a couple hundred grand out of here. Raymond mm -hmm. James says, sorry, <laughs> you know, see you later. Yeah. Uh, and I also don't want clients to freak out thinking we're going to lose it. Yeah, that, that, you can back that up, but that. Um, maybe in a personal, like yeah. um, the husband tells the wife, why are the right. money here? You know, however you want to. Yeah. Okay. But so, yeah, so, so that's, that's what the cyber insurance helps cover. Right. Um, there's also with the cyber insurance, it's so hot. Um, the um, cyber bullying. Okay. That's, yeah. that's actually covered in cyber insurance? Yeah, there is. So if you have young kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes. How do you even cover that? So I'll be honest. I have not had a cyber insurance claim yet. I have the marketing. I understand what is covered. But the way I understand it, and I would want to make sure this is correct, is if, um, say, for instance, you have teenage kids and they're, you know, they're on the Instagram, the Snapchat, the this, the that, and they're getting cyber bullied. And the kids now, the, the receiver of the cyberbullying, can't go to school, is distraught, not eating, all of that. There's, there's some insurance for that, for, you know, counseling. and. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And that, that's, it's amazing. Things that, because we're pretty much the same age, mm -hmm. things that we didn't have to consider growing up. No. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of things that personal insurance covers that people don't realize. Now, how about, when, when, how would that differ from, say, LifeLock? I think the way I understand LifeLock is it um, helps to monitor. But if you suffer financial loss, I don't know if, if, yeah, if then there's then any insurance. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Got it. And Whereas yeah. the cyber insurance does help cover those financial losses. Hmm. Is there any other big sort of leading end or leading edge things happening in the insurance, particularly around tech or particularly around uh, uh, what's happening? The NFTs are a big thing. Tell me about that. Let's, let's dig into that. So a little bit. I'm not proficient. I'm not an expert in that. I'm it's not non fungible token tokens. Yes. For, yeah. Yeah. For so, um, Art is huge. Um, art's getting into the NFT world. Performers, celebrities. Um. And basically what you are buying, there's a lot of talk about this. I think Jack Dorsey, the, the former, you know, the guy that founded Twitter, his first tweet, they did an NFT of his first tweet, which is basically a unique digital um essentially a copy of that but mm -hmm. it's but it's it's unique unique and it's, it's held on the blockchain so it's verified that yes. you own the specific you know image or yes. piece of art um and i think the guy the guy's asking like 30 million dollars now he's trying to sell it he bought it for like three million dollars i think a few years back but the nft thing it, to me is pretty fascinating it is and it doesn't stop people from taking the image and printing it out right but it's, right it's, it's it's very abstract and the insurance world is 
insurance is slow to catch up sometimes. So yeah. we are getting caught up and I'm talking as a whole, there is not a lot of insurance to be sold for the NFTs at this time because they're... But theoretically, the reason you own that is there's zero loss of... Correct. Po possibility of loss of exactly. property because you can't. Unless exactly. You, unless you, you, know, you, you, you kill the entire blockchain. Exactly. So what is there to insure? Exactly. Okay. So... There's, I received from my, um, one of my corporate people uh, at the agency I work with, sent an email, and I, I read it and I didn't look into it yet, um, but there is one type of insurance that's being sold for the NFTs, but the NFT that you could buy the insurance for is very specific. So I don't have all the information around that yet. What about, <clears throat> what about digital currencies, cryptocurrencies? No insurance. No insurance on that yet. No so, insurance. So you, you hear, <coughs> excuse me. Because you hear some instances of, uh, I remember hearing one a few years ago with a guy that had his um, his tokens were all stored on his computer, mm -hmm. and that went to the landfill, and there was I think with Bitcoin maybe twenty thousand, which is about forty now. I mean it's thirty forty million dollars worth of Bitcoin on the computer, and he was yeah. trying he was trying to get permission from the municipality to go start digging through the the landfill trying to find his computer, which at this point probably probably yeah. lost. Yeah, but there's, there's no and nothing happened in the insurance world around that. I am not a claims adjuster, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say no insurance. No, so, so someone calls you up and says, insure my crypto wallet, and you're, you're out of, I'm, you're out of yeah. luck. Or, yeah, or if your story, that person calls me up and says, I need insurance for my computer that got trashed, and I've got you know 40 million of crypto on it, I'm going to be like, sorry, you don't have any insurance for that. Interesting. All right. All right. Yeah. Anything else that's uh, out there that's that you know, we should be thinking about. I, I think my biggest takeaway is have a good relationship with your agent and have good communication with your agent. Hopefully your agent, I believe insurance in, in whole are good people that want to help others, help our clients. And I hope that society is having a good relationship with their agent and being given good advice. If you have that gut feeling that you're not, trust your gut and go somewhere else but definitely be having communications and hopefully you know you're having a conversation with your agent at least once a year okay. you know t tell them when you're remodeling your kitchen tell your agent when your kid's going off to college these are all things that impact you and that the insurance companies need to know about well personally i have to tell you i've always been super impressed of how responsive you are because it normally uh, it's normally like nine or ten p.m. before I go to bed that I start thinking about coverage <laughs> limits for for some of my stuff. Sleep insurance, <laughs> exactly. And that's that's why I'm pinging out the email. And I'm expecting I'm expecting to get a response like some point, you know, in the next day or so. And it usually comes back that night. So you are an insurance nerd, and you definitely definitely help people. If somebody wants to reach you or contact you, how do they do it? So uh, my name is Robin Hahn. I've been in the insurance industry for thirty years, and I do focus in the high net worth personal insurance space, uh, I can be reached at 602-363-4127. And like Brent said, I answer the phone. So give me a call. I have email too, but I'm not going to rattle that off. Yeah. Any of our clients that are listening that want to talk to Rob and I've obviously got all of her contact information as well. I reach out to me or remember my team and, and we can send that over to you. Um, any parting thoughts about this? This has been a great conversation, by yeah, the way. Yeah, no, this is, I was terrified. I was nervous. I wanted to do well. So thank you, you for, yeah, yeah, thank you for making it um, so relaxed. And no, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for carving some time out of your morning. I know that you're busy. I know you got a call and a claim as you walked in. Yes. So I'll let you get back and, and, and deal with that. But again, thank you so much for, for not you. only for today, but everything you've done for thank me you. and my family. Thank you so much. And Robin and Brent, this has been fantastic. Brent, I, I want to thank you for asking a very specific question. Um, my house is a half mile from where the College World Series takes place every year. And I'm thinking about the Airbnb thing just for those two weeks. So yep. uh, I appreciate that answer. I'm going to be looking into that. So Robin, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Brent, thank you for facilitating this and bringing her on the show. And our last thank you goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Smart Money Simplified podcast with Brent Mikosh. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe down button below. This way, when Brent comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at MP Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Smart Money Simplified Podcast. Have any questions about topics covered during the show? visit www.smartmoneysimplified.com or give us a call at 602-255-0555. 
Don't forget to click the follow button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the hosts and or guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional financial advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your individual situation. Securities are offered through Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA, and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors Incorporated, MP Advisors, LLC, is not a broker slash dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services.